Let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Not the series, but the game. Not the terrible Xbox 360 game, or the beloved classic Sega Genesis game, the 8-bit game. This specifically is Sonic the Hedgehog for Sega Game Gear. The Sega Game Gear was Sega's handheld console back in the 90s, meant to rival Nintendo's Game Boy. Not only did it have a color screen, but it was a backlit color screen. Also, check this out, mine's still in the box. Man, I can just imagine playing Sonic on this thing. You would have been the coolest kid around. Yeah, your favorite hedgehog with the attitude, anywhere on the go. As long as anywhere on the go meant anywhere within a two hour radius of your house because the Game Gear had like a two hour battery life. Let's be honest, if you really want to experience the Game Gear version of this game on real hardware, you're going to grab a Sega Genesis Model 2 power supply and plug that big old black brick into the mains. This is Sonic the Hedgehog for Sega Game Gear, and we're going to be looking at two different versions of this today. This version, which is the most prevalent version and is on most collections, and the Sega Master System version. Is Sonic 1 8-bit worth your time? Let's find out. Welcome to Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. If that sounds cool to you, why not subscribe? Sonic 8-Bit. Sonic's first foray on an 8-bit system. It came out a little bit after the Genesis game. Yeah, for the second game in the series, technically, trust me, it's a completely different game, Sega decided to jump back a console. Probably give those who hadn't experienced on the Genesis or hadn't made the jump to the Genesis, particularly in regions such as Europe and Brazil, where the Master System was huge, a chance to experience Sega's new mascot. So what's the main difference between the two versions? Well, obviously, as the Master System is a home console and not a handheld, you have much more screen real estate here. However, on the flip side, I feel like the Master System version was probably developed a little bit before the Game Gear version, as some of the stages seem to be a bit more brutal. Take this stage in Jungle Zone, for example. If you fall off any of these platforms, you're dead. However, in the Game Gear version, this series actually just scrolls back down if you fall, being a bit more, shall we say, fair? However, as far as graphics and gameplay, even music go, they're pretty much the same. Except for Sonic, in the Game Gear version, for some reason, he's lost his nose. Gameplay-wise, it's very similar to Sonic 1. Seriously, Sonic doesn't have a spin dash or anything. You're really just running and jumping and trying to build up momentum by running here. Of course, you can still spin into a ball to take out enemies, but that's pretty much it. Graphically, it does look like a demade version of the Genesis version, and I'd understand if you'd think that this is just going to be a straight port of the Genesis version to inferior hardware based off the first zone, Green Hill. But that's what's interesting here. Three of the zones, Green Hill, Labyrinth, and Scrap Brain, are returning from Sonic 1. However, the only one of these zones to even have the same music as in the Genesis version is Green Hill. Labyrinth and Scrap Brain have completely different music, and all of them have different bosses, such as Green Hill here. Wow, that's pathetic. In the Master System version, some of these are actually quite a bit of a challenge, particularly this one in Jungle Zone. Wow, that one gave me some trouble. But on the flip side, because of the screen crunch on the Game Gear, these are made absolutely pathetic in the Game Gear version. Plot-wise, it's pretty much just Sonic 1 again. Dr. Robotnik, who would later be retconned as Eggman, is terrorizing South Island, so it's up to you to get the six, yes, only six, chaos emeralds and go put a stop to the mad doctor's plans. What's really cool here are the original zones. Bridge zone is pretty great except for that freaking auto scrolling section in act 2 which I guess goes to show that there was horrible auto scrolling sonic levels even before sonic forces. Jungle zone which is very platforming heavy but seeing as this game's a little bit slower than its genesis counterpart I think it works well here. And the final zone, Sky Base, which comes right after Scrap Brain, and though it's quite a bit of a challenge, I really like it. It's a perfect way to end this game. Difficulty-wise, I'd say it's a bit harder than Sonic 1, but a bit more balanced. The only area where it seems to falter is the Brint Zone somehow feels even slower when you're underwater than in the Genesis version. You know what really makes things a pain here? Whenever you get hit, you can't collect your rings again. And I thought that was a defining staple of Sonic. Now, something that's absolutely classic here is the music. And that's thanks to Mr. Yuzo Koshiro, who did the soundtrack for this game. And if that name sounds familiar, it's probably because you've heard his work in the Streets of Rage titles. It's good stuff. However, if you would like to play this game with a bit more oomph, there is a fan-made version of this game called Sonic 1 FM. And that's actually the version I've been playing, if you've been listening to the background music. In Japan, the Sega Master System had an FM sound chip that pretty much gave it sound capabilities comparable to 
to the Genesis, except they sound a bit smoother and less twangy. By pressing the pause button on the Master System while playing the FM version, you can toggle either between the original soundtrack or a new fan-made FM soundtrack, which sounds phenomenal. Seriously, these are great covers here, and I think I even like some of them more than the original tunes. The one thing that's very strange here, though, is how Chaos Emeralds are handled. Yes, there are special stages that can be accessed by getting 50 rings at the end of a stage, but all those will do is allow you to rack up lives and continues. The Chaos Emeralds themselves, though, are hidden inside each stage. I'll be honest, though, like in Sonic 1, and spoiler alert, the ending really isn't that radically different if you get all six of them. As this game, once again, is a bit slower than its Genesis counterpart, I think these are great incentives to encourage exploration of each stage, because except for that auto-scrolling stage in Bridge Zone, these levels are really fun to explore. Also, is it just me or is it a bit strange that there aren't any loops in this version? Apparently, loops were too difficult to get working on the Master System games, but then again, they got them working in Sonic Chaos, and, and also the fan-made Zippy the Porcupine for the Atari 2600 had loops, but seriously, that's a minor gripe. This is a great version of the game, and do I like it more than the Genesis version? I'm not sure, but I really enjoy this version. Though the Master System, due to being a home console, doesn't have any screen crunch, the Game Gear is designed to mitigate the effects of screen crunch, and this levels feel better designed. Yes, Sonic can cheese the bosses here, but honestly, if you want an easier time and a more relaxing Sonic experience, this is the version to go with. However, if you are a diehard Sonic fan who has played this game a ton, definitely download the fan-made Sonic 1 FM for the Master System. Yes, it's the harder Master System version. Granted, this game isn't too terribly difficult to begin with, if I do say so myself. And it's a great way to put a spin on the classic game. If you're not one for emulation, there are plenty of ways to go about playing this game. Yes, it was on the Wii Virtual Console service, but unfortunately that's gone. But it's still been released in many different forms regardless, such as unlockable on Sonic Adventure DX and on the Sonic Mega Collection Plus for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. I'm sure countless other releases besides that. It's not a very difficult game to get a hold of, and I'd highly recommend it. I may be beginning to ramble just a bit. Do you have any memories with the 8-bit Sonic the Hedgehog games? Why don't you let me know down in the comments section below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to Stuff We Play for more great content like this, or if you really want to go the extra mile, even support us on Patreon, because every dollar does go back into the channel. But with that, thank you very much for watching. Stay classy, and I'll see you next time.